Hello everybody, my name is Christopher Battles and I'm the artist in residence here at the National Museum of the Marine Corps. And so I thought I'd explain to you what exactly I do as the artist in residence and as a, as a combat artist as well. Um, basically, we tell the story of the Marine Corps and the Navy through pictures, through traditional painting. Uh, we go to various places where people are training, Marines uh, deployed, uh, and we sketch them. We take as many photographs as we can, and then we do artwork based upon those experiences, those sketches, and those photographs. So this painting is uh, about flight deck operations on the USS Batan, LHD-5 is the designation of the ship. And so this is the 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit Aviation Elements. So we have aircraft that the Marines fly. We have naval personnel on the deck doing various jobs that you can tell by their color of their jersey they do. Um, You've got the people that handle the aircraft. You've got people that put chains on the aircraft to keep it sturdy and stable and so it doesn't slip before, before they take off, obviously, they take the chains off. Um, we have aviation fuel and we have mechanics and different things like that. So this is a, a picture of how the Navy and the Marine Corps work together uh, in, at sea. These are a couple images that I'm working on uh, that are examples of how we uh, follow the Marines as they train. So these are young second lieutenants who have just, uh, they've just gotten their, their bars, they are now new officers, and they're training how to be good infantry officers. And so we followed them in the field, several artists and myself, and we sketched them when we took photographs. And so, like I said, I'm using photographs that I took while they were training, and I'm starting the painting. I have an undertone here. You basically start off with a simple drawing, and you can get as detailed as you can, obviously, but it has to tell you where everything lays out. and then. Over that, I put tones of color. You can see how this is still in its beginning form. And then as I go, more and more color and just suggestions of detail to finally make it start looking like I want it to look. And so it resembles what you're portraying, but it also is very painterly. And you can see brush strokes. That's right. Getting a career as an artist takes, of course, discipline and lots of practice. Just like anything, if you're pursuing physics, if you're pursuing sports, if you're pursuing any other field, uh, and maybe even more so with art, it takes a lot of practice. Just do what you love and draw what you see all the time, all the time, all the time. Keep practicing drawing and, and every day take a sketchbook with you. Uh, take a camera with you too, in case you see some scene that you'd like to paint and just keep going at it day by day. Hello again. So now we're gonna discuss some basics on drawing. Uh, we're gonna discuss a little bit of perspective and then we're gonna talk a little bit about what's called cross-hatching and rendering with lines. So perspective, of course, in common parlance and some manners of speaking means the way you look at something. And in this case, specifically how things appear as you see them and as they go away to the horizon. So one point perspective is what we're gonna talk about. And first we start off by drawing a horizon line. And I'll just put H Z for my horizon line. This is as you're looking into the distance, that's the, as far as you can see. So as you've noticed, if you've ever walked around and noticed people, people up close are bigger than people as they get further away. And as they go towards the horizon, they get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so perspective enables you to portray something that, that does this. So um, you start off all perspective drawings, especially with, with one point perspective, with what's called a vanishing point. And that's the point at which everything vanishes. That's why it's called the vanishing point. So everything that you draw will recede to the vanishing point. So let's say you're drawing, if you have train tracks and you see them come out in the distance, and they come closer to you, they go back and they, they go to the distance, okay? We're gonna draw a house using one point perspective. So I've got my vanishing point. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to draw the front of my house, the closest part maybe of, and it's just going to be a box at first. So I'm going to draw it. This is the face of the house, and uh, it's, you know, we're sitting there. And it's not going to change it for a one point perspective. It's not going to change size. But we're going to draw from each corner towards our vanishing point these lines. Now, if you're using pencil, which I would recommend, you can draw them very faintly. 
so they don't stay because you'll want to erase part of these these guiding lines that go to the vanishing point. And what this is going to do is going to show me where there's lines do go that way. Oops, ah, I did that wrong. It's going to show me where. See, like Bob Ross said, there are no mistakes; we're just happy accidents. So this is going to help show us where our walls and end of our house go. So I'm going to draw the bottom of the house. It's not a super big house. It's a modest house. And so what this shows me is these guidelines show me where the sides of the house seem to get smaller as it goes towards the rear of the house. So that the, the rear wall of the house looks like it's shorter, but that's gonna look more like the house that goes back in the distance, okay? Hatching is a method not only with eggs to have chickens, it's a good thing too, but hatching and drawing is when you use lines that are sort of parallel or near each other to make things show darkness and lightness. So as you make the, the hatches or the lines closer together and more dense, it makes a darker area. And as they get further apart, it's a lighter area. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show a little bit of shadow on my house using hatching. So imagine that the sun's coming this direction. This is the dark side of the house. This is more of the light side of the house. It's hitting the top of the roof. So this appears to be a little bit darker than the other areas. So it's the same way with, let's say they're kicking the ball around, rather big ball, soccer ball or something. Okay, if I wanna portray shadow, I can use hatching or cross, we'll show you cross hatching in a second. To, to give a little bit of a form, just a little bit, to make it look a little bit rounder. Cross hatching, is hatching, of course, lines, but that go crossways, all right? So as I, let's say I wanna portray the ball and I wanna make, I can start off with hatching, but I can also come in like that. So any, you know, anything I wanna portray as, as, as a darker or a lighter, I can use cross hatching. And you can even do it and so let's say you have your picture here and you have an object and a person here, you know, and you can, um, I can make, use hatching and cross hatching to make shadows in the room. So it allows you to make darks and lights as you need them in your picture. And that's kind of a primitive drawing, you get what I mean. So that's basically hatching and cross hatching.